Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister gave a commitment that she would treat Scotland as part of a union of equals. Yet last night, she pressed ahead with a power grab in yep. direct opposition yep. to Scotland's elected parliament. The Prime Minister silenced Scotland's voice, having broken constitutional convention and plunged Scotland into a constitutional crisis. Will the Prime Minister now commit to bringing forward emergency legislation so that the will of the Scottish Parliament can be heard and, more importantly, respected. Yeah. Can I say to the right honourable gentleman that we it, do expect that the outcome, and it will happen, that the outcome of the whole process of Brexit is going to be a significant increase in Holyrood's decision-making power. It is, not, it is not the case that this is in any way a power grab. Uh, we, over 80 areas of uh, responsibility of decision making are going to flow direct to Holyrood. Only the SNP could say that getting 80 areas where they go more areas where they're going to take decisions was a power grab. If he wants to be concerned about the process that this House has followed in relation to the legislation, his real question should be why it was the Labour Party who manoeuvred last night, used procedural manoeuvres to ensure that there was no debate about the amendments referred to on Scotland. Ian Blackford. Mr Speaker, I really do hope that the people of Scotland listen very carefully to what the Prime Minister said, because the reality of the situation is that powers that are enshrined under the Scotland Act in 1998 are being grabbed back by this. were not given the courtesy of even debating it last night. It is a democratic outrage. The people of Scotland will not be disrespected by this Parliament. Mr Speaker, under the circumstances, given the disrespect that is shown, I have got no option but to ask that this House now sits in private. at this time, and I'm not obliged to do so, is my clear understanding. Order, the Honourable Gentleman. Order! The Right Honourable Gentleman can resume his seat. I'll happily take advice, but I don't think I'm obliged to hear that at this time. Well, what I'd say to the Right Honourable Gentleman is, I think the standing order requires that the matter be put, if it is to be put forthwith. It order, order... It might be for the convenience of the House for the matter to be addressed at the conclusion of Prime Minister's questions. And if the honourable, right honourable gentleman, who had not signalled to me his intention to do this now, wish order, 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 order. I mean, well, it, uh, I'm always grateful for the moral support of the right honourable lady, the member for Broxter, even when it is chunted from a sedentary position. I realise that it's done for my benefit, but I think I can handle the matter. We could have the, we could have the vote now, but we could order, we could have a vote now, and or it could be taken at the end. If the honourable gentleman which is to indicate a desire to conduct such a, a vote now. So be it. Right. I, I beg to move. I, I beg to move. Well, my advice, I've had a mixed sequence of advice, is that oh, order, this has not happened, but order. My view is that it is better for the vote to be conducted. Order. My view is that it is better for the vote to be conducted at the conclusion of questions to the Prime Minister. No, I'm not. Order. 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 I always admit of the maximum number of votes and divisions, as the right honourable gentleman should know from his experience in the House. But I hope that he will trust me that I know of what I speak. There can be a division, and it will be at the end of this session, not now. That is the end of the matter. The Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, might I ask... No, no, I'm not... Bit, no, resume your seat. Resume your seat. Mr Blackford, no, I, no, you're not moving anything. Resume your seat, young man. Resume your seat. Mr. 
Stafford, I'm mal- Order! 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 The House will have heard very clear... Order! Please. The House will have heard very clearly my acceptance that there can be a vote on this matter. Order! Mr Linden, I say to you, and I say it in the kindest possible spirit, don't tell me what the procedures of this House are. I'm telling you that there can be a vote at the end of this session, and not now. I'm not going to... No, no, Mr Blackford, order, 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 under the... Resume your seat, Mr Blackford. Under the power given to me by Standing Order No. 43, in light of the persistent and repeated refusal of the Right Honourable Gentleman to resume his seat when so instructed, I order the Right Honourable Gentleman to withdraw immediately from the House for order for the remainder of this day's sitting. He is so in... Right, he won't. Right, well, we'll have to have the vote. Very well. Very well. Very well. Order, 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 order. Order, 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 order. 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 Mr. Chair Wardener, you're a very jocular fellow, but you're a little over excitable today. Calm, long time to go. I say order. I say only to the House, order! I say only to the House, what a pity, because there are Scottish National Party members of Parliament who had questions on the order paper. And as colleagues know, I always like to get to the end of the order paper. They would have had their chance, and they've lost that chance by their own choice. Mr. I'm here. What do you want me to do? Hi, Ian Blackford. Um, You've made a protest in the Commons. You've been barred and booted out. A protest based on what? Scotland's voice has not been heard. We have had changes to the devolution settlement that were pushed through last night without Scottish MPs' voices being heard. That's a democratic outrage. I asked the Prime Minister today to bring in emergency legislation so we can conduct a proper debate with respect on the powers of the Scottish Parliament. Let's discuss the power grab that is coming from Westminster. That is not acceptable. And the, and the Speaker refused to allow a division, which I rightly called for. It is an absolute disgrace. My job, my colleague's job, is to stand up for the powers of the Scottish Parliament. I will do that. Well, let me put it to you. The Speaker said you could have a vote after PMQs. This is a under, stunt. Under, no, understanding orders, I was entitled to push for that vote today on the basis of the lack of respect that the Conservative government and Theresa May has shown and showed with their answer. It is not acceptable. I have a duty on behalf of my colleagues, on behalf of the First Minister and the Government of Scotland and of the Parliament of Scotland to stand up against the betrayal that has taken place of the Scottish people with the unprecedented power grab which is taking place. We need to, we must and we will stand up to defend Scotland's interests. You heard the Prime Minister say that something like 80 powers will come back to Holyrood and that more powers will flow directly to Holyrood 
after Brexit. She recognises, she must recognise that what is happening is that she is ripping up the Scotland Act 1998. She is pulling back control over areas such as fishing, agriculture, the environment, food standards, without the consent of the Scottish Parliament representing the Scottish people. Where is the respect to the Scottish people? Where is the respect to the sovereignty of the Scottish people? And what happens now? You have called for emergency legislation to do what? Well, we need to have emergency legislation in order that the government recognises that the Parliament in Edinburgh has not given consent to what the Prime Minister is doing. Let's be under no illusion. This is a constitutional crisis. We are now giving message to the government that we will take them on. We are not prepared to sit back and see powers taken from the Scottish meaning Parliament. Take, we are not take having them on, it. What? We will take them on in every way. We will use parliamentary devices to hold this government to account. OK, Ian Blackford, thanks very much uh, for your time. Well, Ian Blackford, uh, of course, just uh, left the chamber after being, in effect, kicked out uh, by the Speaker. Let's now return to the Commons and uh, Prime Minister's questions, which are still going on. Uh, can I uh, join with my right honourable friend in remembering the anniversary of the Grenfell fire? Uh, can I commend her for the way she has established the inquiry that is looking into that tragedy? Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the BBC News at One. There have been angry scenes in Parliament in the last hour as the Scottish National Party's Westminster leader was ordered from the House of Commons by the Speaker. The SNP's other MPs then walked out of the chamber in a row about the way Scotland has been treated in the Brexit process. It comes as Theresa May remains under pressure over key Brexit votes and how much say MPs will have in any final deal. Our political correspondent, Jonathan Blake, has this report on the day's events. Can you really please both sides, Prime Minister? She's trying to keep everyone happy, but how much did Theresa May promise and can she keep her word? Questions to the Prime Minister. Jeremy Corbyn accused the Prime Minister of reneging on... this lunchtime, those extraordinary scenes when PMQs was pretty much brought to a standstill after the SNP's leader demanded that the Commons go into private session because of what he called the democratic outrage of the power grab by Westminster over Brexit, also attacking what he called the disrespect shown to Scotland by the fact that during yesterday's explosive debate, only 15 minutes were set aside for considering devolution and Scotland. And when he came out and spoke to me, Mr Blackford said he would now be fighting all the way the government's plans on Brexit. And you just sense when it comes to Theresa May and Brexit, it never rains but it pours. She's having to deal with the rebels in her own party, she's having to deal with the European Commission, she's having to deal with cabinet ministers speaking out. Now she's got the additional headache of the SNP on the rampage. Norman, thank you. Norman Smith. Well, the government uh, may have seen off that Commons defeat on the EU withdrawal bill, but there is, as we've been reflecting, still a long way to go to the end of the Brexit process. Chris Morris from our Reality Check team looks now at the next steps.